A Turkish court has ordered the arrest of a television station chief and three police officials on terrorism charges, but has ordered the release of eight others, including a newspaper editor, connected to a U.S.-based Muslim cleric accused of plotting to overthrow Turkey's government. Turkish media also reported Friday that Istanbul's prosecutor had asked the court to issue an arrest warrant for the cleric, Fethullah Gülen, who heads the Muslim group known as Hizmet, Service, and once strongly supported President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Samanyolu TV chief Hidayat Karaka and the three police officials were placed under arrest Friday after being detained with some two dozen others over the weekend in raids targeting individuals who allegedly had plotted against Erdogan. However, the court ordered the release of Ekrem Duman Lee, the editor-in-chief of the opposition Daily Zaman, who was also arrested in Sunday's raids. Gülen has been in open conflict with Erdogan since last December, when Erdogan was still Turkey's prime minister and a corruption investigation was launched targeting members of his inner circle. Erdogan blamed the probe on followers of Gülen who had allegedly infiltrated Turkey's institutions of power, but the cleric has denied any involvement. The United States has not responded to repeated requests from Turkey for the extradition of Gülen, who has lived in Pennsylvania since 1999. Police are continuing to investigate Zaman and Samanyalu, both of which are linked to Gülen's Hizmet movement. Staff members of those media outlets are being charged with terrorism offenses, which opens the door for the companies to be confiscated, said Bülent Kens, editor-in-chief of today's Zaman, the English-language version of the newspaper. It's a big possibility, probability, right now that Mr. Erdogan makes a plan to confiscate the Zaman daily maybe presents the Hizmet movement and the journalists of the Hizmet movement as part of a terror organization, Kens said. And with new law he could confiscate the Zaman group and Samanyalu group and any media groups close to the Hizmet movement. Under a law that took effect just days before police launched probes of Zaman and Samanyalu, assets and companies belonging to people under investigation for terrorism can be seized even if those individuals have not been convicted of a crime as long as there is a reasonable suspicion of guilt. Analysts said the law was probably introduced to target the Gülen movement's sizable business interests. Attila Yezalada, Istanbul-based analyst for Global Source Partners, said that what happens to the media companies under investigation could have far-reaching consequences for the Turkish economy. There are more than 75,000 members of the pro-Gülen business association Tuscan, so this is not a small matter. Yezalada said. But the economic fallout of confiscations might not be confined to Turkey. Analysts said emerging markets like Turkey are experiencing considerable financial volatility, which has prompted increasing scrutiny of the Turkish political situation. Inan Demir, chief economist at Finans Bank in Istanbul, warned that in such an environment, international sentiment may not react kindly to such actions by Turkish authorities. When the overall sentiment is strong, people have the tendency to look at these things as isolated incidents, rather than more general threats to economic policy-making, Demir said. But clearly if the investor community is more discerning, even because of reasons that come from outside of Turkey, at those times I would say such moves never help. The increasingly bitter dispute between Gülen and Erdogan has been blamed in part for the sharp drops in the value of the Turkish currency earlier this week although much of those losses were subsequently recovered. With expectations growing in Turkey that the crackdown is set to expand, analysts are warning that there could be further political and economic instability. In a possible sign of dissent inside the government over the crackdown, Deputy Prime Minister Bülent Arınk voiced concern Friday over the probes and detentions. Arınk has a reputation of being the voice of the pious grassroots of his party. But consultant Yezalada said that even if pro Gulen companies aren't confiscated, they are facing growing pressure. A lot of these companies operate under fear, Yezalada said. Koza Alton, a mining company linked to Gulen, claims one of their mines has been safety inspected a total of 147 times within a year. So in country where many coal mines don't get inspected in a decade, 147 times is pretty onerous. In another example, authorities have suspended trading in shares of Bank Asiya one of Turkey's largest Islamic banks and widely seen as being close to Gülen three times, 
and the bank has faced repeated investigations. Observers warn such pressure is likely to continue for anyone linked to the Islamic cleric.